Welcome back. In this video, I'm going to talk about preference aggregation, what we mean by that, voting rules. So there are sort of two ways to aggregate preferences that we're going to discuss. The first one is the voting rules, and the second one is the social welfare functions. Uh, I'm going to talk about social welfare functions in another video. And then in this video, I'll continue uh, Condorcet voting and then uh, talk about uh, one of the problems uh, the Condorcet voting has, which is what we call Condorcet paradox. All right. So first of all, what is the preference aggregation? What do we mean by that? The idea is the following. We have a, a group of agents, a, a society, a population and uh, a set of alternatives. Um, the, these agents have preferences over those alternatives and uh, hopefully and eventually um, they're going to, I mean, we're going to select one of those alternatives. The, the society is going to select one of those alternatives. And what we um, would like to know is that, um, you know, which alternative is the best, uh, sort of makes the, so, so, sort of the most preferred by the society. So that's, uh, in order to sort of uh, make this uh, um, a judgment, uh, we, we need to aggregate preferences. Well, when every agent in the society uh, puts the same alternative as their first best, well, then um, the argument is pretty straightforward. That alternative should be the one that will be selected, right? Because it's the best for everyone. And so uh, the society prefers this alternative the most. However, when the agents in the society have disagreement about which alternative is the best alternative, well, then um, the answer is like which alternative is the best for this uh, group of agents is not that straightforward. And so uh, different uh, uh, aggregation rules or procedures are, uh, are, are, are suggested. So, as I said, I'm going to talk about the voting rules in this video, in particular the Condorcet voting rule. So, in order to sort of mathematically describe what uh, voting rules are, I need to give um, a, a framework. Um, and in this framework, what we usually assume is that we have a group of agents, all right? N agents. Uh, obviously, the problem is not interesting if uh, n is equal to 1, right? Because it's just one individual. So the society consists of that individual. And so there's no need for aggregating preferences. However, when we have two or more agents, well, then aggregating their preferences makes sense. Well, these agents could be, for example, firms. So the government is going to um, uh, select a, a policy uh, regarding taxing a particular industry or some regulations regarding some industry. And so those N agents are N firms that are already operating in this industry. And so uh, those uh, firms will potentially have preferences over those uh, policies. And so then as the government or as the, uh, uh, the policymaker, I would like to know which alternative is the most preferred alternative for those N agents. <clears throat> Alternatively, those could be N agents could be voters and they're going to vote for, say, president or they're going to vote for, uh, if we're talking about uh, a board meeting, so N agents are members of a board of a company and they're deciding on a strategy, for example, so they're choosing alternatives. All right, so alternatives, the set of alternatives, the set of alternatives could be um, anything, you know, any non-empty set of objects. All right, well, uh, basically that's it. Two, I mean, two or more agents, uh, the set of alternatives that uh, these agents are going to have preferences over. And, and then, one more, um, uh, one piece of notation, the set of preferences, preferences over the set of alternatives A, all right? So we denote it as uh, P. Well, the set of preferences by which we mean a complete transitive 
and reflexive binary relations. So if you remember the concept of preferences in Intermediate Microeconomics 1 course, well then the preferences are uh, complete transitive reflexive binary relations over a set of alternatives. All right. So that basically means if you don't remember uh, that you know reflexive transitive complete binary relation stuff, well that's fine. Uh, by preference relation we mean agents can rank the alternatives. All right. There's going to be a clear first best, second best, third best, etc. All right. Um, and all any two alternatives are going to be comparable. I mean, either, so let's say X and Y are alternatives, either X is better than Y or, or, or Y is better than X, or uh, the agent is indifferent between X and Y. All right. <clears throat> so P is the set of uh, preferences. Well, given that we have N many agents, and each agent has a preference over the set of alternatives, well then we create a set which is p to the power n, which basically indicates the preference relation um, of uh, agent 1. So let's say we number the agents, all right? So we call someone agent 1, someone agent 2, and so on. Uh, what we basically do, we create a vector of preferences. That is the set of preference, preference profiles. All right. So everybody can have a preference over alternatives. And so when we bring them together, we basically create a vector and then vector is called preference profile. All right. So they finally a voting rule all right is a function which basically maps every uh, preference profile to a preference relation over uh, the set of alternatives all right so that's what we mean by aggregating preferences all right um, and again voting rule is just one way of aggregating preferences once again uh, give us so the um, Voting rule is a machinery, is a machine where you basically insert uh, all the agents' preferences in the society. And then as an outcome, it gives us one ranking over the alternatives. And that ranking we call social preference. All right. Social preference. So it tells us socially which alternative is the best which alternative is the second best and which alternative is the worst. All right. And so we would like to know uh, what kind of rules uh, we can use, you know, what are their properties, etc. Or, or do we have uh, voting rules or uh, uh, aggregation uh, rules which have nice properties? OK, so let me give you an sort of an example just to visualize, help you visualize what the heck is going on here with P, N, A, etc., etc. So let's suppose N is equal to three. So we have three agents and let's suppose we have three alternatives. Let's call them X, Y and Z. All right. These are the alternatives. And so the set of preferences over uh, the set A is a large set, all right? It's going to include a bunch of rankings. For example, X, Y, Z. I mean, uh, agent ranks X or better than Y and Y better than uh, a Z or X, Z, Y, uh, Y, X, uh, Z, uh, Y, Z, X, Z, X, Y, Z, Y, X. Right. And th this is not it. We can also include the indifferences. For example, the agent is uh, preferring X to Y and Z. However, Y and Z are indifferent. All right. Or it could be the case that X and Y are ranked first and the agent is indifferent between the two. I mean, there isn't a unique first best. I mean, there isn't a unique best. There are two best alternatives. And both of those alternatives, X and Y, are better than Z. All right. So we can include 
uh, uh, indifference. So dot 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 means there's actually a bunch of many other uh, rankings you can write there. So what matters is that there's going to be a complete transitive and reflexive uh, relation. All right, so a ranking over those alternatives, uh, and all those rankings. Uh, uh, potential rankings are included in this set. And so when I talk about a, a, a p to the power n, again, I can't write all the elements. However, for example, the following x, y, z, x, z, y, and x, y, z is one element of this set. So what it says is, oh, agent one and agent uh, three uh, are having exactly the same preferences over the alternatives. And all these three agents actually agree on the first best alternative, which is X, all right? Or another example could be X, Y, Z, uh, and Z, Y, uh, uh, X, and Z, Y, X, which basically says, oh, agents two and three have the same preferences, and they have um, diametrically opposed preferences uh, uh, to agent one, all right? So X is agent one's first best. However, it's the worst alternative for the other agents. Z is the worst alternative for agent one. However, it's the best alternative for the other agents. Another example, so it's also an element of this set. Another example could be, I don't know why, X, Z, uh, Z, X, Y, and then X, uh, uh, y, Z, all right? So they have uh, completely different uh, rankings. So they can't agree on what alternative is the best. There isn't even a majority. Uh, they can't agree on what is the worst alternative. But nevertheless, I, so this is also an element of this uh, set. Uh, in my examples, I will keep using strict uh, orderings, but we can also use the indifferences as well, all right? So again, as I said, in my examples, I'm going to stick to strict orderings or strict preferences. I, you know, when, when I don't write two alternatives next to each other, when, when each alternative is uh, uh, below the previous one, it means the, 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 the preferences are strict. So here, agent strictly prefers x to y and strictly prefers y to z, all right, and so on. So what we would like to know is, is like, if this is the preference of the society, I mean of the agents, what can I say about the social preferences? I mean, is it x, y, z? Is it y, x, z? Is it x, y, z indifferent socially? Is, what is it, all right? And if this is the uh, preferences of the society. What can I say about the preferences over X, Y, Z? So I need to know for every given element of this set, I would like to know the ranking of X, Y, Z, X versus Y versus Z, uh, which is going to be an element of P. All right. So this is a function or a rule that we're looking for. And this is what we call voting rule. All right, so we can create, come up with many voting rules, very famous ones. One of the very famous ones is, is the Condorcet voting. The Condorcet, uh, a French mathematician philosopher who lived uh, right around uh, the French Revolution. Um, so he says, um, look at any two alternatives, all right, any, oops, any two alternative, alternative, all right, x uh, versus y, uh, we say x is socially, socially preferred to, preferred to y, if and only if x, uh, well, the majority, the majority of the agents uh, rank x over y or prefer x more than y all right so compare any two alternatives all right uh, x and y let's say um, we are gonna say x i mean the condorcet voting says x alternative x is socially preferred to alternative y if and only if this is what if double f means the majority of the agents rank the alternative x over y. 
if the majority of the voters rank y over x, well then that means the y will be socially preferred to x. All right, I, I hope you got the idea. Uh, well, what is the majority? Majority is basically uh, more than half of the population. So if I have n many voters, half of it is 2, right? Uh, well, n can be even number or odd number. If n is an even number, so this is going to be an integer, uh, plus 1 is the... Um, uh, majority. If n is an odd number, n divided by 2 is not going to be integer. So then what we do, we basically look at the, uh, uh, the smallest integer that is higher than n over 2. All right. So example, if n is equal to 20, well then 11 is the majority. I mean 11 or more voters constitutes majority. If n is, for example, 21, well, again, 11 or more people constitutes majority. Okay? So, uh, so let's give an example, all right, so that we understand how the Condorcet uh, voting works. So rather than giving the preferences of agent 1, agent 2, agent 3, in this example, I'm going to uh, group them and let's say we have three groups of voters. 11 voters have the same preferences, which is X better than Y, which is better than Z, let's suppose. Nine voters have the same preferences, which is different than this, and they rank Y better alternative as, uh, than Z, and Z is better alternative than X. And then the remaining 10 agents, so we have total of... Uh, 20, 30 agents. The remaining 10 agents prefer Z over Y and then Y over X. Okay? So if this is the profile of preferences, what is the outcome of the Condorcet voting? Well, as I said, we do three comparisons. X versus Y. Uh, X versus Z, because we have three alternatives, we have three comparisons, uh, 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 Y versus Z. So when, so how should social preference be when it comes to X and Y? Well, I'm going to look at the majority, how the majority thinks about X versus Y. Well, 11 people, uh, 11 people ranks X above y. However, 10 plus 9 people ranks y above x. So here the majority, because it's 19 people, more than, so if, because n is equal to 30, our majority here, uh, the, 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 the minimum number that we need is half of it plus 1, 16, all right? So 16 or more people, as long as 16 or more people rank uh, y above x, well then socially y should be ranked above x, all right? Uh, that's how the uh, Condorcet voting works. Well, we do the same thing for the other uh, comparisons, x versus z. So let's see how the majority thinks about x versus z. So 11 people rank x above z. However, again, 19 people ranks Z above O. Yeah, so uh, the majority of those 30 people, 19 of them, rank uh, Z above X. So therefore, Z should be socially ranked above X. And then finally, when it comes to Y and Z, so here I have X, Y, here I have Y, X, here I have Y, X. So once again, I have... Um, 19 people preferring, oh, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm comparing Y and Z, sorry. So Y, Z, Y, Z, Z, Y. Huh. So what happens is like 20 people prefers Y more than Z and only 10 people prefer Z more than Y. So the majority therefore thinks that Y is a better alternative than Z. Hence, socially, Y should be ranked above the alternative Z. All right? Um, so... Let's bring all this together. It says, well, given that these are the uh, binary comparisons, I should definitely write y above x. 
z should be above x, all right? So z should be either here or here or maybe indifferent to y. Uh, and the third one, y should be above z. So it means z has to be here. So that means the social ranking, social ranking, if this is the preference profile of the society, should be y, z, and x. y as the first socially first best, z is the socially second best, x is the socially uh, worst alternative. All right, so this is how the Condorcet voting works. All right, well, so it's, I think, an intuitive criteria, partly because it says, uh, uh, you know, the majority things uh, this way, and so the socially uh, we have to obey what the majority thinks. However, the Condorcet voting sometimes leads to problems, all right? So I'm going to give one example where, another example, where Condorcet voting may give us uh, some errors, uh, which we call it Condorcet paradox. So uh, it's coming up next.